Okay, I think we can probably get going. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thanks for uh, for joining us today, taking time out of your day to uh, to hear a little bit more about what uh, with the guys at uh, uh, Nebraska Public Media. Yes, that's the new name. Uh, we're joined by Dave Stewart. Uh, if you can see up there, and then James Bloomfield uh, from MNC. And uh, what, what we're going to talk about today is just uh, you know what what um, uh, Nebraska Public Media has been doing over the last few years, uh, where they started, um, what they're doing with their mo uh, monitoring and control system, Mosaic, um, and how they're covering 92 counties, uh, nine full power transmitters, and 23 translators across Nebraska. Uh, it should be really interesting. Um, and uh, if you guys want to say hello to everybody, that'd be great. Hello, everybody. Good morning, and thank you for joining. Um, Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me in here. It's uh, nice to be here, and I'm glad to talk, glad to share our experiences with you. Awesome. So, if everybody wants to ask questions, you know, you can do that in the chat. It's very easy to do it, um, and we'll get going. So, Dave, you know, I really appreciate you you joining us, and and really appreciate. All the uh, all the time that you have spent with uh, with James and the rest of the crew making their their lives uh, miserable by making him do work <laughs> and getting some great stuff. So, you know, you had a system before. I believe it was Max View years ago, and and th there was a time that you realized that it needed to be changed out. What what was the process in the beginning that you looked at Max View and go, what what do we need to replace this with? Well, thank you, Bill. Uh, I'm going, you know, we've been using the MaxView operating system, uh, network management control system for about 22 years. We started in about uh, uh, 2000. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, back there, uh, using the old technology from two decades ago, which is all serial and GPI and very little Ethernet or SNMP. We used a fractured frame relay to connect everything together, and it was very cumbersome. As technology continued to change and go on in our industry, we went to ATSE, moved to digital, moved to all this stuff like that. You know, that technology changed and our needs changed like that. Uh, we were forced to go outside of our NMCS environment a lot. And, and I was really not comfortable with that because it took the operators away from monitoring like that. Uh, also, we ran into the situation where some of the newer equipment couldn't be interfaced into that old system. It became clear to me about 10 years ago as the administrator of the systems that the system we were using MaxView would not suffice our needs for the future like that. So we began internal discussions about what that change might look like and what we needed to do to be future ready, not future proof, but future ready. Like we know that, you know, uh, there's a lot of changes and we need to make sure we can adapt to those changes and everything's going on. We are a state government entity and we follow the state purchasing process. So we put together an internal working group and we listed all of our needs, wants, and wishes. After putting all that together, we published an ITB, an information, uh, uh, an RFI request for information. And it went out to everybody out there who had an interest in doing this kind of stuff. We took all that information, formulated an RFP, and we put that out on the streets like that. The response to all those, we found MNC and the Mosaic system. And we found that the Mosaic system was the most responsive to the needs for the state of Nebraska and for NET and Nebraska public media. Uh, not only was Mosaic capable of usurping everything that we were doing with MaxView, it brought a whole list of additional capacities and features that personally I'd only dreamed about. And yes, I dream about this stuff and sometimes it becomes nightmares, but uh, uh, through Mosaic, we're able to communicate with devices that are primarily not thought of as being controlled or monitored through an NMS system. Primarily and typically and historically, we've thought of NMS or MCS systems as teleport, that kind of stuff like that. But we're looking at doing, uh, using it to as an umbrella for every monitoring from the front door to the back door and everything in between that we're uh talking about uh, things like IT hardware and software systems, operational environments for television and radio production, critical on-air, mission critical areas, and other things like OTT, SMPTIP, ATSC3 initiatives. All those kind of things are what we're looking at doing. And Mosaic brings a lot of those 
to us now with those capabilities to communicate to anything. And as we go through here, we'll talk and you'll see a little bit about what we've done. We have been successful in usurping MaxView. MaxView served its purpose here for 22 years. And Mosaic, has, it has now been fully decommissioned and Mosaic has taken over and has taken us to places where we weren't able to do with that system. So we're now moving into those non-traditional areas. And, and James, from your perspective, when you do you remember when you saw the RP come out and, and the list? Because Dave is not just doing television, he's also doing radio. Well, did you see challenges from your perspective about uh, adding the system to what he was doing? That's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, when, when the RFP first came out, we obviously read it through thoroughly and looked at the overall system. And, you know, like Dave, we're very passionate about monitoring control. And it was an exciting challenge to push the boundaries beyond the traditional role of an MNC. So from that perspective, you know, it, it, was, it was exciting to see uh, a, a customer and a, a user of our system that had the same vision and the same ideas that we did in terms of why are we stuck in these pigeonholed into these traditional areas where you know we can go on the OB truck, we can be in uh, master control, we can be uh, you know in all of these different different areas, including the facility as a whole, um, and that was a very exciting uh, prospect for us. Obviously, you know it, it's a new area, so there's going to be a lot of uh, new devices and new integrations that we had to come up with in order to to facilitate that expansion into those areas. Um, but in no means were we. Um, put off by that, we were excited, and we we saw that challenge, and, and really wanted to to uh, impress Dave and his team, and and, and NET and Nebraska Public Media, uh, and really showcase what we can do as as a as a provider of uh, these kinds of systems. And you know, and Dave, but the great thing is, you, you behind you is this incredible wall. I think we're all a little bit envious and jealous of. I mean. Um, and we'll get to that in a little bit. I think I, I'd like to at least show, you know, we have a couple of slides that I thought we'd probably through and just kind of talk us through what we've done in the, on this first slide. Um, I can share this with everybody. Um, you know, kind of talk us through what, what this is. And I mean, this is obviously very traditional to what, you know, you would normally see in most locations, you know, a bunch of call letters in different places, but talk us through this, Dave. Well, this right here, and this this is part of our working system. This is a, a screenshot, but it's actually on the screen behind me as a working system. And this is an overview of our transmissions. As you mentioned, we have these full service sites around the state of Nebraska. We have one site that's an eight hour drive one way from Lincoln, Nebraska. So obviously we just can't run out there. This overview page gives us an overview of the status of the television and radio transmitters and the other signals and processes that are going on out there. Like everything, we monitor by exception and things float to the top. We can click on all the little buttons and everything and drill down deeper into those subsystems. But this is online and we use this 24-7, 365 to monitor and control all of our radio and uh, television transmitters, transmission systems around the state. So go ahead and go yeah. to the next slide real quick. And we'll, as part of this. Um, yeah. You want the next one? Yeah, go ahead and go to the next one because it kind of falls hand in hand with this. Let me stop and reshare because it's not moving the way I want it to move. <laughs> yeah, don't you just love Microsoft? Uh, yeah. But what you're going to connect is is in the in those transmissions that this is one of the monitoring tabs. So when you click on any one of those sites like that, it brings up and as you can see across the top, we have the main site. We have a TV page, radio page, environmental page. Like we're monitoring, uh, you know. Temperatures, thermostats, generators, uh, door alarms, tower lights, waveguide pressure, you know, UPS levels, just a plethora of information. And the monitor test button from each of these sites, we're streaming a uh, unicast MPEG-4 stream back. We have the ability to remotely go in and on this screen, we can select the MPEG switcher, which will switch an MPEG stream into a SIDCOR IRD, that test IRD is shown. And the output is going to the capture card of an analog monitor switcher, we can go through here remotely 
and look at the SMP310, the ASI feed and IP feed. We can decode it. We can look at the HDD, SDI, the different channels. We can look at that picture in real time coming back. We can see the audio. Uh, there's a, now a little button so we can listen to it. You see the little green button on the right is audio monitor. That actually launches the Orban audio monitoring system, which we are using within the system. It brings it up along the bottom are a bunch of macros. So the operators don't have to remember how to set all this stuff up and have a hard time. So we've created macros and automation scripts. You click on one of those and it will show you and configure the switcher, the IRD and the output for what the operator needs to see at that point. So it's it's done a lot of the stuff and taking advantage to this system as it's taking learning curves and kind of flattened them out to, to an extent. And, and Dave, this is um, a good example because you talked about uh, in your initial um, overview of the system, bringing in all of the information under one umbrella and having the ability to decode and show uh, video and audio <clears throat> is part of that, right? So you, you don't have to leave the mosaic system to, to go and pull up all these additional things that you would normally have to do. And I think the, the other thing we did recently, wasn't it? We added the monitoring at the top so that you could get access to the multi-viewer output from all of the sites. So even when you're working remotely, um, and, uh, uh, you know, as a lot of us have had to do over the last year, being at home and not being able to get into the office as such, you know, having that ability to pull all of that, uh, the, the multi-viewer plus all the control capabilities back to uh, any location has been, uh, you know, a game changer for you guys, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Like that. And uh, if you guys could see that this monitor that's right up here, like that right there, that is the kaleidoscope monitor that uh, he's referencing, which is showing all of that within Mosaic. So I'm monitoring down here in my office, but I could be at home, I could be in San Diego, I can be anywhere with a laptop. I have a full remote accessibility to our systems and services. And we'll talk a little bit more about that capability and feature because that's something that, that really... Uh, MNC brought to the table for us that we didn't have. So what we're doing now is we're, we're it has the ability, Mosaic has brought in the ability to handle those multicast and unicast audio and video streams like that. Interactive radar with side overlays, the ability to open painted uh, browsers and panels and pages within the windows of the NMCS like that, and not to exit that environment. Uh, a secure web portal that we have like that with accessibility from anywhere in the world with, with dual authentication that's, uh, uh, you know, authenticating against our domain servers, the security server. Uh, we're doing this for multiple entities and uh, it's working very well. It gives us the ability to literally do anything we need to do from anywhere. And that is our goal as we move forward. And I think that's a really good point you bring up, Dave, is the, the fact that we can monitor it from where, wherever the equipment is and, wherever you may be, you know, even if you're on vacation on a beach in San Diego, you can still monitor. Um, and we've done a really large update just recently, Mosaic 10. And, um, uh, James, you want to talk a little bit about what we did in Mosaic 10 to facilitate that? Yeah, Mosaic 10, um, we, we took an opportunity to redesign our whole uh, web front end. Um, we had got a little bit pigeonholed in some technology stacks um, in, in our first uh, go around on, on the web and we wanted to take a step back and uh, redesign it for the future. Um, as the Dave is pointing in the background, he's got a, a couple of monitors up with the web running. Um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, we were always HTML5 compliant and CSS3 and all the modern technology, but we just, we took a little bit of a wrong turn in our first uh, go around with the web. So we took a step back, we decided to re-engineer it, we put in a whole new layout framework that gives our uh, users, our customers, a lot more flexibility in how they build uh, the overall displays that the users will operate with. Um, and obviously, at the same time, we did a technology stack a refresh. So we, we made sure that we were on the latest technologies um, that would help us and, and see us through to the future. So a lot of effort went into uh, the web front end in Mosaic 10. Um, the other thing that we uh, did, we also took the same opportunity to do the same uh, technology refresh on um, our server uh, backend products and also our desktop client as well. Um, so we did, went through and made sure that you know, we're, we're setting ourselves up to, to be able to move the product forward uh, for the next 10, 15 years. Yeah, and, and that's, a, that's a great point, uh, James, that you know, we've really taken a, a big thought process about where we're going with Mosaic 
And obviously, we all had a, a, a very challenging 2020. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Um, I know that Dave has been, you know, thinking about remote working for for some time. In fact, they, you just recently uh, um, got a grant to be able to help one of your radio uh, personalities do remote work. Is that correct, Dave? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, before anybody knew what a pandemic was, we had thought about this issue, the issue of, of uh, you know, remote accessibility and that was one of the things that we had talked about in our internal working working groups when we published RFP is we wanted these capabilities. We had talked about that. Uh, uh, excuse me for uh, we had talked about having that capability here like that. Uh, we do disaster recovery and diversity for a national entity, which you can probably imagine who that is. And part of that, when we built that years ago, was the fact that. In their scenario for that, uh, they had it designed so that they could grab a laptop and go anywhere with a Wi-Fi connection and remotely control their network distribution systems. We put that in place, and as we looked at us, we thought we need the same thing for NET for Nebraska Public Media. We need to be able to deal with whatever situation for whatever reason whenever it arises. And lo and behold, a year and a half into this project, the pandemic hit. The first thing our CTO came to us and says, how can Mosaic help us help people work out of the building? We immediately started working on that. And like you said, we have put together, I have six laptops, six MiFi's and six cell phones. We're set up. We have the streaming and the other stuff that we can do our remote transmitter operations from offsite. That we, it's very important for us to be able to do this. As part of this stuff, like you just mentioned, we have a situa situation that we're working on where we have a radio announcer who's in Houston, Texas. That he is going to be doing his live show from Houston, Texas uh, and broadcast over the Nebraska public radio systems. We're in the process of putting a system together that will allow us utilizing Mosaic and other tools out there to do, uh, to do that, to be able to do that. Our long-term goal, obviously we have the immediate needs, the wants and wishes. The immediate need is we have this need to put this person on from down there. So we're scrambling and doing what we do as a broadcaster. The long-term forecast and what we've looked at and planned for is Mosaic is putting in the control surfaces and the other stuff to that end right now. The Mosaic developers are developing the interfaces for our Pathfinder, audio over IP, the Telus Axios system, the other radio systems. All of that will be able to be shown and presented within control surfaces within Mosaic, as well as be able to monitor it, listen to it, do it. That in conjunction with the other tools, we'll be able to remote our broadcast. We're also looking at taking that into the other areas like uh, our radio, our television productions, when we move off site. Okay. The slide that you just put up there is part of our master control stuff. And that shows, you know, some of the monitoring that we're doing for master control and monitoring the PBS satellite feeds and all the little black boxes on the on the far right will all be streaming pictures, thumbnails out of those. We're already interfaced with the spectrum analyzers and those kind of things. But we've put all the stuff in place to allow us to do a better job of monitoring and controlling that. Uh, if we go through here, Bill, go ahead and go go through some of these slides here, because there's a slide in here that we're working on in just the last couple of days. This slide shows some of the monitor by exception like that, that we're using for the video servers, the IT servers. As we move this system into other places, we have the monitoring we use for television and production systems also works for monitoring ITS systems and other systems throughout the facility. Go ahead and advance the slide. Well, and ju just for a minute, I mean, this is a very common slide that we that we use, you know, for, for our standard um, um, displays is a very simple approach to understanding what's going on with your system, right? Green is good, red is bad. Uh, is there other colors in here, Dave, yellow? <laughs> yeah, 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 the yellow will come up as a warning and then red as an alarm like that. Once we get it, you know, you can click on one, it'll take you to the device and we can look at it. All this stuff is going to be accessible that we're putting together to be able to, to literally remote control our facilities from anywhere within the building or with outside the building. Go ahead and advance a little bit. This is a shot of what will be our retransmissions, which is the feed into the ATSC encoders, the WARN system, the watermarking, and the IP isolation and distribution. On the right are MPEG-2 decodes of the output of our encoders that are being distributed across the state. 
The next slide is something we're just working on, and I'm just going to let you know that this is a game changer. Like that, this is our main panel here, and James and I were just hugging around with this yesterday, and we we're just starting to develop. But we have the ability to bring the Versio Master Control flat surface switcher interface into a mosaic panel. We're interfacing the tag multi viewer, and with the mosaic, with this setup, we will be able to remotely control and operate our master control. We will be able to implement hard switching and, and control any of the services we're putting out. So once we get this all online, I can take a laptop and send somebody out with one of our setups for any reason. And we can, if we have to, a pandemic, a fire, whatever, we can control our systems elsewhere. We also have the ability to monitor those systems and we know what's broken and how to, re, how to route around those systems. As we go forward like that with all this stuff, uh, you know, Mosaic is a great tool for orchestration and it allows us to present things to the operators in an NMTS environment that would otherwise not exist. Is that, James, do you have a better way of saying that? No, I think, I mean, you, you kind of capture, right? So that we're putting in <clears throat> all of the systems that are in play and coordinating uh, operations across those systems. These are normally disparate systems that, that, wouldn't communicate with each other, but by, by the fact they're integrated into Mosaic and Mosaic's providing that umbrella, that orchestration layer, um, we can coordinate activities across these disparate systems and provide that business intelligence, that business logic to, to perform whatever feature or function that, that, uh, that NET needs. Yeah, and, that, and that's a really great point, James, is that, you know, when, and and Dave, you know, jump in here as we look across. I mean, you you obviously had a, a goal in the beginning, uh, which is to replace a system that was doing uh, a few things. And after you got Mosaic and you you started to realize that there was much, much more that could be done because, you know, it doesn't all stop at master control and production. It usually expands a little bit further than that. Um, and, and what you're doing, is, as you've mentioned, and I, you know, one of the big things that we've always done really well over the years is transmitter sites, uplink, downlink sites, because those have traditionally always been remote. What are some of the things that you, you've found after putting Mosaic in that you started going, wow, I can put all this in? I think you mentioned uh, security control for the building or something like that, right? That's exactly right. In our requirements, we wanted this not to be just traditional NMCS, but we wanted it to go across all areas. Like I said, from the front door to the back door. So as I kind of alluded to, we started off and got these different areas or different phases. You know, so there's ITS, information technology services, you know, engineering, teleport, PBS, you know, satellite receives, routers, government services, production, radio, on and on and on, all these things. Well, how do we do this? Well, Mosaic is the umbrella under which all of the lie. So let's just take ITS, information technology. So when we start looking at that, traditionally they have tools like SolarWinds, Nagios, and other things, and they use a plethora of tools to monitor their servers. They use the tools within VMware to monitor the health of the clusters and those kind of things. We're able to, through Mosaic, do direct monitoring and control of those systems. So by bringing that in and developing our ITS interfaces, we're able to replace some of our legacy systems are used with a mosaic emulation of those systems. Uh, we have developed a ping engine. The ping engine lets us know that things are alive. So rather than have to pay Nagios to do that, we've got an intelligent ping engine. We can go in there and we've we've been able to, to take the intelligence. And this is part of the things that Mosaic brings is it, it's got an, uh, a machine learning and an AI level and some trends uh, stuff. But we can go in there and we can set the levels so that you know, if I miss meetings in a two-minute uh, level, I can estimate it to a uh, elevate it to a warning level, and then if I miss so many more pings in the next ninety seconds, I can escalate it to a to an alarm level and escalate that up. So we can set the various like that. Uh, that comes in really good, and we can do that on all the ITS equipment. That same thing, like I was showing you, though, applies with network operations and engineering production, radio, all these people now have servers, you know, whether it's a news boss running on a Dell or an HP ProLiant server, whether it's a Avid system running on a piece of COTS hardware, it's all put together on COTS hardware now. So now we're able to go in and monitor that hardware for its health and status, power supplies, fans, CPU, storage, memory, all that. Along with that, we can also monitor the services running on those systems so that if a service stops like that, 
then Mosaic can say, hey, the service stuff, I could try and restart it. I'll restart it three times. If it doesn't restart three times, I'm going to send an email to the supervisor so he can come do something about it because it needs some TLC. Yeah. So <laughs> Mosaic brings those tools. It also has an enormous database and is capable of, of tracking all of that stuff. So all that information, you say, well, that's really good, but where does it all go and what do I do with it like that? Because literally, it's a lot of stuff to clean. But it goes in the database and it's parsed out and we have a SQL engine on the back end and Mosaic has the ability. And once again, this is one of the requirements of our RFP to formulate reports and to provide those reports to us in a lot of different fashions, a PDF, an email, a text, a HTML, all kinds of stuff. However, we want. you know, I can give an outage report. So every morning when you come in the office, there's one in your inbox like that telling you what happened overnight. We plan to do this for ITS directors, for our production director. So when they come in, they know. Here's what I got to do deal with today because this is what happened overnight because things never break overnight, right? <laughs> but now never. the other thing is, is is I've always tried to be proactive and not react. That's my stance. I want to you know prevent things. Mosaic by tracking those trends and putting in the database can say you know the last ten times this happened, this happened. The last hundred times this hundred thousand times this happened, this happened. You know chances are it's going to happen again when we're going to do this. So. The more you do something, the faster the system gets, the more it learns, and the more we're capable of putting those conditional automation hooks in there. You know, if this, then what? You know, and if that, then what? And if that, then what? And it just goes on and on and on. And we've done that to an extent. Uh, we have by no means finished, but, but applying that across all solutions like that, we've got one of the new things that James talked about was the new software. And I just want to talk about this a uh, second. I didn't show anything, but our facilities layout gives us the ability. We are mapping six levels of our facility, all the rooms in it, all the equipment in those rooms. So I can go through and then by putting those CAD drawings inside Mosaic and layering them out, I can filter out everything except all the printers. So if I'm in ITS and I want to do a printer inventory, I can go and go click, 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 and I can show every printer, every location and status of every printer in the facility and run a report. I can do the same thing for active IP ports in use. I can do the same thing for PCs up, down. I can do the same thing for fire alarms, door alarms, smoke alarms, you know, sentry, you know, security cameras. We looked at the, the streaming video. Well, we also have security cameras around our facilities and at our remote facilities. That information also will be able to come through Mosaic. Somebody opens the door, alarm goes off, camera comes on, goes full screen. Look, somebody's walking in. Yeah, you know this person? Down the road, we got facial recognition. If we don't know that person, we'll sound an alarm, call the police automatically. Yeah. But right now, it's giving us and it's opening up opportunities and all the other stakeholders. At first, one of my hardest jobs was selling this internally. You know, we've used it for years and years and years in engineering in MCS. But when I start going to ITS and production people and say, hey, we want to, we want to monitor control all of your stuff. Yeah. The first fear is they all think we're going to try and put them out of a job. No, actually, what we're trying to do is give them the tools to help them do their job more efficiently, more effectively, so that they don't have to run around. To that extent, when we were talking about the remote, we're putting fully vetted Mosaic core server in our remote production truck. We have a 53-foot full expandable remote production truck. It will be interfaced with this. It will be tethered to the, to the system. It'll be able to operate independently on site or when it's here in the building like that. The thing that that allows us to do is we can take that out on site, the EIC can take that out. And now instead of him having to worry and spend two hours going through every rack on the truck to find out what's working and what's not since the last time he fired it up, he can call up Mosaic and say, show me what the status is. And at one glance, he's gonna have a complete status health check of his truck. We'll be able to go in and set up presets so he can go and load a configuration and it will change the configuration of the truck from a basketball setup to a volleyball setup or a football setup from a 720p for BTN to 1080i for CBS or somebody like that. You know, we can continue to go and we can do this. We take advantage of these tools. And that was the whole promise behind computers and everything way a long time ago. As everybody knows, when we, computers came to the workplace, it was to take the mundane stuff away from us and give us time to be more productive with the stuff that we really want to do. A lot of people, you know, spend more time playing solitaire than doing other stuff. But when you use the tools for what they were designed for, they're very, very useful. That's what we're trying to do is put the systems in place to allow the system to do the things that it needs to do on an ongoing, continual basis 
to free up the highly talented individuals so an editor can edit, a producer can produce, and an EIC can worry about the things that are important and not the little bitty gnats flying around. You know, as a chief engineer, I, you know, I wear many hats and, and I couldn't do it all without a network management control system and the capabilities of Mosaic. Well, and that, and that's one of the, the coolest things as well, uh, Dave, that you mentioned is that because you you are responsible for so much and there are so many different interfaces and so many different systems and so many different things. I mean, what, you know, IP has always been a big buzz over the years. One of, one of the cool things I, that I love to, to mention is that, you know, not only are we, you know, very good and James, you can speak to this. We're very good at dealing with everything that is computer related. And, you know, even if it doesn't have a, a proper API or driver, we can take it from a web page and parse that information out. Um, I, I think you could speak a little bit about that, especially with Mosaic 10. We just released uh, Mosaic 10 with hundreds of editions of drivers, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously we don't want to be scraping data off a web page if we can uh, avoid it. That's, a, that's definitely a last uh, point of call if, if we have to go that route. Um, but, you know, Traditionally, NMS systems have been SNMP based. Um, today, that that technology still exists for sure, but um, there's such a wider range of different protocols and different APIs that a system like Mosaic has to be adaptive and be easily expandable into those new areas. So, uh, as of Mosaic 10, um, we support right out of the box. We have SNMP, we have REST, we have SOAP. Um, we can do any uh, TCP IP based protocols, whether they're proprietary or, or otherwise. Um, legacy serial, um, obviously, is still a big thing in the teleport uh, area. Um, GPIO, um, we have some great partners, uh, hardware partners with, with Davicon, Comlab. Um, they provide excellent hardware that we fully integrate with, and that opens up the door to so many different things when we start looking at remote telemetry units. So, you know. Whatever the protocol, it can be other things that we support just out of the box. We have Modbus and we have Corbin and we have, you know, basically the, the the motto that we go with, if it has a means to communicate, we can listen to any piece of hardware, software, whatever it may be, um, it can be integrated. Um, Outside of smoke signals. Well, well <laughs> even as well, we, I mean, we, we've done, as, as we said in the last webinar, we've done some uh, fairly non-traditional things like hooking into a Twitter stream. Uh, to be able to no be notified when problems were happening. You know, those are the kinds of things that, you know, weren't possible 10 years ago. And, and we're having to find ways of now integrating it. And one of the nice things with, with uh, Mosaic 10, we now also integrate with more third-party applications. So you can hook into your Slack, your Microsoft Teams, whatever you're using as a communication platform at the, at the corporate level. We now fully integrate with those. So, you know, when alarm goes off in, in, in the NMCS, we can generate a Slack message, a Teams notification, whatever it may be, to um, you know user groups to alert them that a problem. So it just adds another uh, arrow into our quiver in terms of we've got emails, SMS, and now um, these other integrations into third-party communication platforms. Um, you know, we we can also integrate into things like uh, Grafana and, and Prometheus, and even we have North Band interfaces into other uh, management systems because you know not. We're not always an island unto ourselves. We have to work within a larger ecosystem and being able to, to be able to integrate well and seamlessly with all those systems is is a critical part of, of any any uh, forward plan of, of a business these days. And I, and I can completely contest that the Slack works uh, because all our developers use our Slack channels <laughs> constantly to test them. In fact, the other, I think well, last night. Am I being spammed by uh, Slack? <laughs> <laughs> let me just, let me just add to what, what James was saying. And, and one of the things we've ran into it, and my, my kudos to MNC and all the developers is like James said, legacy protocols versus new protocols we found. And as you, everybody knows, oftentimes you have equipment that has multiple protocol interfaces like that. We found that all, a lot of times, the SNMP with the MIB that was provided by the manufacturer isn't right, doesn't work. Wow, go figure. Documentation is lacking. We found that we've been able to do other things. Uh, what James said brought to mind one of the early things that he did is we had a particular device with an SNMP provided MIB and an interface. It wouldn't work right. So James, using the tools like that, was able to take, there's a client, and he was able to take and capture the data stream and basically 
reinvent the interface using a TCP connection as opposed to the SNMP like that, and it works perfectly to this day. Like that. The manufacturer still hasn't fixed his, uh, his stuff. But it, what's really interesting about this is the legacy hardware, and, and I'm glad James mentioned that and like that. You know, our facility, is, we've been here for, for, for 50 years. Like that. We've got legacy content in here, legacy equipment. How do I interface that into? We've just recently made what I consider a pivotal change. And that's, we've been able to interface into our Grass Valley Jupiter Venus router system. Now that's a 25 plus year old system uh, that is proprietary and using their technology, we are able to query and issue commands to that router as well as our other routers. And as we go forward and we look at a hybrid router with SMPTE IP switching and layer switching for MPEG packets like that, that's where the orchestration comes in and being able to do that. So whether we can, if we can talk to it serially, SNMP or, or even GPI, if that's what it takes. But Mosaic has multiple options. I, I'm looking at it. It's the Uber Swiss army knife of network management control. Well, that's a, that's a great point, Dave. I mean, you start looking at these systems. I mean, I've been, I've been in TV a long time. You've been in TV a long time. We all realize that we, we have, I need today to not only do the the APIs uh, of the world and and some of the other you know computer generated stuff, but getting into a Venus router and being able to have a uh, a full XY of it is is pretty cool. It's way cool. And, and, and so on the jazzed. other side, you have you have a RESTful, you know, uh, uh, you know, you have a tag or a Kaleido that that works on RESTful APIs. Mm -hmm right next to it and you and you look at the two of them and i think that's remarkable that we have the ability to span such a, for lack of a better term such a wide generational gap of equipment oh, yeah well you know and and we talk about the service level and the orchestration my intentions and our intentions of talking with mnc and as we map things out so so yeah not only using all those protocols to talk to all the different things but we can put together the orchestration level. And by what that I mean is when we get the router interface and I've got two platinum routers, I've got an IP router and I've got a baseband uh, wideband router. We can create the scripts, the translators and the other tools within the umbrella of Mosaic to allow an operator who doesn't know any about this. And this is where the, the, the concept, what we term the NET, 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 NMCS concept was that with new technology comes a new skill set like that. Operators are having to come in now and learn new equipment constantly. You used to come in, I used to know how to edit, I edit, I do this stuff, that's great. Now I have to know how to edit 20 different pieces of software or systems or that kind. What Mosaic allows us to do is create an interface that we can present to the operator, that how he operates it. And it's really pay no attention to the man behind the screen. Because back behind the screen, we can interface through any of those protocols to multiple systems to get what he wants happening. The operator doesn't know that I push the button, it's actually initiating a, a, a profile load in an Aja frame scene. It's converting a digital feed to an HD feed. It's then routing that into an IP encoder and routing that IP feed into an Arista switch and routing that output into a multicast stream. You know, whatever it happens to be, the operator doesn't have to remember that. We plug that all in the background and all he does is punch one button and Mosaic orchestrates everything that takes place. Not only does it orchestrate the primary path, but it has backup and resiliency and it logs that stuff. And so as we look at our service level, I was talking earlier about, about Mosaic being able to tell if services are running. So I've got in this service level, everything's fine, but all of a sudden a service drops. It can try and restart it and fall over to the next system. We can upgrade equipment and not have to worry about the operator or any of that stuff because they can continue to function and concentrate on doing their job like that, the primary, you know, uh, uh, an editor can edit, a producer can produce, and, a, and an engineer can engineer. Like that, uh, it's great, and and it really brings everything to to the forefront. And the abilities are literally whatever we can think of. Uh, the little story I like, James was saying, uh, if you can communicate it to it, we can do something. Even if we can't communicate, there are ways. Uh, I had a piece of device one time that had no interface. It had an alarm light, so we put a photo sensor with a piece of, of electrical tape over the over the alarm light. Alarm came off, fired off the photo sensor, GPI contact closed, says, I'm in alarm, come look at me. Yeah. <laughs> we, Mosaic is the manager of managers. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, but what we wanna know is when the wheel needs air, when the, when the wheel needs change. Mosaic can do that. Mosaic can also say, hey, 
look at me. We use Mosaic to monitor itself like that. That is so cool. So, so we have primary core server, security server, database server. It's monitoring all that. It's monitoring the health. It's monitoring all the threads that, you know, it just, it's really cool that, that it can take care of itself. It's, it's smart enough to do that. And it lets us know when it needs help. That, that's nice thing, Evan. Just to add a few points there. I mean, it, it, it's it's a great thing when we can enable a customer to make the right technological choices for, for what they need. And being able to abstract the actual hardware away from their software um, processes and workflow is a is a powerful tool to allow you to do that. Because as soon as you, you take away that coupling, it opens up so many different opportunities. You go, uh, you know, any team now have the opportunity to go and buy the hardware that's right for what they want and the price point that they want it. They're not tied into a certain vendor's particular hardware just because it happens to fit within their overall system or the monitoring system. So it also enables a lot of freedom in terms of, um, you know, the choices in terms of technical hardware and other things that feed into it. And the other thing that I just want to quickly touch on is with such a, a large system as, as NET you have with touching so many different areas, another core component that I think Mosaic is, is, is enabling them to do this is because it has such a strong security background so that we can restrict users to be able to only perform the tasks and actions that they need to do. <clears throat> with a, with a multi-tenanted system like this, you don't want users to have overlap. I mean, with the, if they have permissions, then yes, you do, but you want to restrict certain users so they can only see the areas that they need to deal with uh, and not be uh, opening up the system to, to areas where they shouldn't be playing around with and, and, and being able to, to, to see and touch. So having that, that, that security background as well enables us to do these multi-tenanted systems like the one in NET. Um, and James, thanks, because that's really great. And that's a good point about the security because prior to that, we weren't able to do that. So I could, you know, I could, I could not keep somebody, if they're in, they're in like that. Now we can use the mosaic and somebody from ITS logs in and they can only see the ITS system, engineering, radio. So they don't see anything because obviously somebody on a remote production truck doesn't want somebody in the not changing something on their truck and vice versa. Just to give an example, like what James is saying, we have 27 different permissions groups within Mosaic to allow the different levels of access to the different areas like that. And also going back to what you said too, and this is very important because this was an institutional decision for us across all areas. One of the things we do now when we're looking at procuring new equipment systems is on our onboarding process, we have a, what are the NMCS hooks? You know, in other words, we wanna make sure any future purchase we have, have the capability to interface with this system. And we wanna know that up front. That is now one of our technical requirements. So we have a we have a question from Jeffrey. Uh, Dave, what was the biggest obstacle getting this system implemented? For us specifically, <laughs> government bureaucracy. I mean, bar none. That is the biggest obstacle. And James is going to laugh at that because he knows because we spent hours and hundreds of hours with state purchasing procurement. And we talk about our bid, our bid and review and response, and everything was hundreds of pages long like that and was thoroughly vetted. So that was really the most painful process because, you know, that's not the stuff we enjoy doing. Beyond that, the most difficult challenge that I had like that, which we have overcome, thankfully, with Mosaic's help, was taking this system, like I mentioned, into non-traditional areas and having it be welcome. Not only am I the chief engineer, the administrator, but I've become the, the local salesman for Mosaic as I'm selling the concept internally. We've given several, we gave a presentation three years ago at TechCon. We were doing a PDS TechCon in Vegas uh, about the concept. This is a three-year project. We're two years into the three-year project. It doesn't stop there. That's just the implementation. But as we continue to go forward, we're going to do that and, and, and take this into all those new areas like that. But the biggest obstacle was getting that buy-in. Now people have seen through the things that we've done, the interfaces we're doing. We have a bi-weekly conference with the developers and the MNC principals. We share ideas, we talk, we collaborate. You know, I'm not doing this in a vacuum. I don't want to do it in a bubble. I'm involving the other stakeholders. Like I said, it's very important to me that we satisfy 
their needs and their wants. So I always ask you, what is your needs, wants, and wishes? We'll satisfy your needs today. We'll look at what your wants are tomorrow, and we'll grant your wishes next week. Okay, but working with them, then we can formulate, you know, I'm not a producer. You know, I don't work on the remote truck, but an EIC or something that does, they, I'm not going to tell them how they need their stuff presented to them. I need them to tell me how they want us to present it to them. And then we'll do that. And then when they upgrade equipment, we'll change it on the back end. The front end doesn't change. They get new personnel that moves around. They continue to operate the same way. Learning curve is flat like that. Pay no attention to the man behind the screen. It's an awesome thing. Uh, and that's, a, you know, that's a great point, Dave, is you talk about the man behind the screen. I, I think one of the cool, really great features that, that I always love to talk about, and James mentioned a little bit earlier, was our AI component that we have always running in the background. You, know, you talk about equipment purchases in the future. I, I know that you mentioned something, and I'll let you speak on it in a minute, but I wanted James to tell us, you know, what what is that AI in the background? What What is the ultimate goal of having that uh, moving forward? As you were talking about equipment purchase in the future, it was a great uh, talk about you know, what AI does for you as a company. Yeah, so um, it, it's an area where we're, we're obviously expanding our capability. It's a, it's, a, it's a relatively new feature in the field of monitoring control. Um, but the idea behind it is that we have a wealth of information that's being collected in the back end in the archive. Let's use that information to make better determinations going forward. Um, so it's as simple as, looking at trends and being able to uh, predict alarms in the future. So, you know, maybe have a, a amplifier tube, looking at degradation of performance there and indicating, you know, a potential time when it's going to fail and knowing ahead of, ahead of time that you're going to lose uh, that, that amplifier. It can be power supplies looking at, at you know, uh, effects on that. It can be, you know, temperatures, this space, whatever it may be. It, it, you know, looking at trends in the data and being able to predict if we continue at this rate, this device is going to fail or run out of disk space or uh, switch off due to a temperature alarm at this time in the future. And being able to know that ahead of it actually happening is, is, a, is a hugely powerful thing. Um, but it goes further than that. So, you know, obviously we are a control system too. And one of the, the, the key elements of, of a system like ours is we're trying to maintain our customers uh, being on air as much as possible. I mean, these failures do happen. Uh, from time to time, there's nothing that you know you can you can always do about it ahead of time. So once a failure does happen, getting that customer back on air as quickly as possible is a is a huge part of what we do. So that that intelligence that that automation uh, comes in as well. So that you know if a failure does occur, if we can actually automate the recovery. So you know without having a a human in the loop, we can uh, you know change cross points on a router, reconfigure uh, profiles on encoder and get that service back up and on air again without ever having to, to have a user come in and actually click a button. Now, you know, how comfortable our customers are with that level of automation is, is down to them. And it's something a lot of times they grow into as, as time goes on. Um, but the other thing that the, the AI component uh, comes in at is that, you know, a lot of times if you have a single failure and, and I'm sure Dave can speak to this, when a device fails, usually it's not just one alarm that you see on the, the MNC. It is a flood of alarms. Um, you know, one device failure could cause, you know, if you have a MUX outage, that could have an impact on uh, 20, 30 services, and you will be flooded with alarms in, in a matter of seconds. And for an, a human operator to be able to decipher what is the root cause of that problem, what really happened, and rather than than flooding them with, with hundreds of alarms, being able to suppress them and give them a single alarm that says, this device has failed. It's a hugely powerful thing. And that's where the AI factors in is making those intelligent decisions about having seen all the data and the previous events that have happened, how can we take that information and overlay it onto current conditions and, and future conditions within, within the software and be able to give our end users and operators the most intelligent information that we can give them to, to help them do their job. So, James, as Bill says, he's having a technical issue, so we'll just take over here. What you said, though, let me just add on that, because 
what we're doing right now, what you and I are working on, or should I say what you're working on, is you know our RAS server like that we're talking about. So yep. we're using the system to monitor itself. We send our signal to our transmitter, remote transmitter sites terrestrially along with the IP connectivity uh, for the MNC. Mosaic will help us maintain FAA and FCC regulations and maintain compliance. Uh, FCC regulations state that when we're broadcasting, we have to be in control of our transmitter. Therefore, if we lose terrestrial connectivity, and it does happen quite a bit, we have storms and blizzards and other things and cars run off the road, but we have uh, the Comlab stuff there with an internal modem and we have put together a RAS server. So if Mosaic loses connectivity, because it's got one of the ping engines looking at the far router and it's constantly, are you alive? Are you alive? Are you alive? What's your status? And when it escalates or gets to a point to where it says, no, I'm not responding, then Mosaic will initiate a dial-up telephony call and it will start a peer-to-peer -peer data sharing and it will say, all right, give me a dump, give me a dump, give me your status. At that point, we can turn the transmitter off and affect changes on the transmitter, see what the status is. If we lose the telephony like that, we'll have the ability to have it on-site automatically shut down. So these are the some of the things that come in. And like James was saying, as we go forward, we intend to program the stuff. So if this happens, this is what I do. And if this happens because of that, this is what I do. So it's a big truth table. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. It doesn't come out of the box ready to go like that. Nothing does. Yeah. But provided our plans and we know what we want to do, we can go in and tell it if this fails, switch to that. Whether it's a simple switching a cross point or whether it's very sophisticated, load a profile, bring up another server, whatever it is, it's very capable of doing all of that stuff. I just want to add one thing there, Dave. It's, it's, it's amazing to see the mix of new and old technology, right? Um, so oh, yeah. that's a great example. I haven't touched a dial-up modem in, I don't know how many years, but the fact that that is still a, a valid um, disaster recovery mechanism and the fact that we can still support it today as an opportunity to you know, basically still retain control of those transmitter sites, no matter what else happens. As long as that phone line's active, then we can control it. Exactly like that. So, I mean, there's lots of options and, and there's lots of things we can do. And we're continuing to go, go through this. And our intention is to take Mosaic like that, run it to its limits. You know, I'm, I'm always, uh, I want to see, you know, if it's a dollar, I want to get a dollar and a half out of it. <laughs> so, so I'm going to push things like that to, to do as much as they are. I'm going to challenge uh, James and Dave and their staff, all the developers at MNC. Yeah. We're learning all the, the technical staff at, at uh, Nebraska Public Media, they're all learning. Everybody's growing. Uh, we were talking about the, ch the uh, challenges and obstacles and the buy-in. You know, now people are seeing what we're doing. Like I said, they're coming on board. They're getting excited. They're coming in. They're asking me, hey, can I do this? Can I do that? You know, how soon are you going to start working on my stuff? It's, it's got us real excited. And there are some people that are just biting at the bit to get started and others that, you know, as we go through, it's, it's, it's to give you an example, we got so much going on. We have a develop, separate development server for the developers at MNC to use to, to develop and test. We had such a bottleneck, we temporarily spun up a second one so that we have two development servers running full time every day doing development on the systems that were going in. And like yesterday, there wasn't enough. We need more. <laughs> so. It's really, it's really cool because we're doing a bunch and we intend to keep pushing the, the boundaries of this. And when the time comes when we're all back again at conferences, uh, eventually you'll probably see us at NAB, TechCon, or the other stuff. And we'll, uh, uh, you know, eventually the system will be built and we'll be able to show you, here's what we planned, here's what we did, and here's where we are today. I think that's, that's great, Dave. I mean, I, one of the things I will say is, um, you know, it is wonderful to work with a customer that has the same level of passion for the technology and for monitoring control as we do in in house. And having somebody, you know, we feed off each other, right? So yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> we have ideas, we throw it to you. You have ideas back, and it's a, a reciprocal uh, relationship. And it, it's wonderful to have a, a customer that that we work so closely and so well together. And I think you know, this this. Being on this webinar is just an opportunity for us to show, showcase that a little bit to the rest of the world. And I, I definitely want to just take this opportunity to thank you and, and say how much we appreciate um, you know, everything you've done to be a champion of Mosaic and, and, and to, to, to just show the world the, the amount of passion that you have for this kind of work that you're doing is, is a wonderful thing. Well, thank you very much, James. And thank you to you and David and, and to your whole staff and all the developers there that I've 
come to, to consider part of the family like that. And uh, I enjoy this, you enjoy it, and it's great. And yeah, we feed off each other. And the way we look at it is, you know, we want this to be a win-win for everybody. And if we can do something that we develop for us that helps you and your other clients, customers, then it's a win-win for everybody. Uh, let me just throw this out there. And, you know, I, I don't work for MNC or anything, but, you know, we're heavily involved. But if you're one of those people out there who doesn't have that knowledge, I've been doing this for well over several decades, you know, and, and I'm heavily involved. Uh, I can want to work with MNC and orchestrating our system. But if you don't have that capacity at your side, MNC has in their facilities the ability to design and implement your entire system from end to end like that. And they can hand you the keys if that's what you want, or you can be involved at whatever level is you're comfortable with. Yep. I mean, we always say DIY to turnkey, right? So we yep. can do as much or as little of the work as, as you feel comfortable with, or you want us to do It's totally fine. Um, I think we're getting close to the top of the hour. So, and we've, we've lost Bill, unfortunately, but um, I want to open up to anybody. Anybody got any questions that uh, you want uh, either uh, Dave or myself to answer? Uh, feel free to put those in the chat and um, we'll, we'll hit as many as we can in the last uh, three, four minutes that we have here. So uh, open it up to everybody. Oh, Bill's back. So yeah, any questions, uh, drop it in the chat and um, we'll be more than happy to, to answer it for you. Bill, are you back? Or are you uh, still having audio problems? Mm, I see frozen on my end. Well, all I can tell you, I'll just wrap up. I'll tell you, if, if anybody has any questions, you can put them in the chat. If you don't, I think the, my email's out there someplace. Uh, anybody out there is welcome to contact me anytime. Uh, my uh, email address is dstuart at nebraskapublicmedia.org. Okay. Um, or at netnebraska.org, it's in the chat room like that. You can uh, do that. Uh, somebody just asked, uh, what was the main reason for not selecting MaxView? The main reason like that is we were, let me just put this way, we had MaxView prior and, and MaxView originally started out with a particular manufacturer vendor and had been sold and sold and sold and sold and sold and sold and, sold and resold and all, uh, to the point for the last, Five years of its existence, we were solely doing all the support and taking care of it. When we came to putting it back in, there were features in MaxView that were not supported that we wanted, that we were very interested in doing. Yeah. And it was not a, a coin flip or anything like that. I mean, we we scored and judged everything. Like I said, there was a very big criteria. Yeah. But uh, uh the system worked very well for what we needed like that. Had we not gone outside the boundaries of our traditional NMCS, we would probably still be there. Yeah. But like I said, we envisioned a whole new concept and we've taken this to areas outside and those areas which the other systems could not support. Yep. Uh, sorry, guys. I I'm back. We're almost we're almost out of time. We just want to get one real quick question in um, with, with the mosaic system. Are you able to script automate diff, playing different scenes or events on different television stations? I don't know what they mean by that, but the short answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like the short answer. Yeah, we have, we have a ton of uh, uh, abilities to do automated and not automated. And I think a lot of our customers find, uh, at least in the beginning, on a lot of engineers obviously don't necessarily like to have things that are not necessarily all in their control. But with our, and they, they figure out that the automation portion of it, because it is so um, well scripted in the background and, and there's a lot of check marks you have to go through. And eventually, um, uh, many of our customers have found that the automation portion, especially when we're talking about satellite antennas and, and transmission uh, lines, you know, can automatically fail over to a backup or a slide. James, you can speak a little bit on this um, before we yeah, have to go. I'll keep it short and sweet because we don't have a lot of time. Um, the, the, the combination of, of the orchestration that, that Dave was alluding to earlier uh, during the, the webinar uh, together with a very powerful back-end automation system that does allow scripting um, as one of the just one of the small components within that automation framework yeah we can absolutely uh, time coordinate uh, orchestrate and script and automate 
uh, any sequence of events across any channel. Perfect. So we did have one last question, uh, Bill, just a, just a bit more information about MNC as a company. Um, you know, I don't know if you want me to tackle that or you want to take it. I know no, we no, don't no. have a, we've yeah. only got a, a minute left. So um, obviously, you know, reach out to us um, if you want to know more information about MNC and Mosaic as, as a product. Um, but I'll give you a quick rundown. Um, I know it's, it's time constraints, so I can't go into a lot of detail, but uh, we're a US company. We've been around since 2008. Um, we specialize in mission critical monitoring control systems for the broadcast uh, uh, industry as a whole. So we do teleports, we do RF systems, well, the same thing, uh, baseband, OTT, um, you, you name it. Um, the software itself is flexible and can cover uh, uh, areas beyond the traditional, as we've talked about with, with Dave Stewart from, from uh, NET, going into facilities, going into post-production, master control, uh, router control, all of those areas we are able to, to um, operate in just because of the flexible nature of the software that we have. Um, we have uh, customers in pretty much every continent in the world. Um, uh, we, we have, I think, as a customer, the biggest broadcaster in the world, I think the number one and number two, which is uh, DirecTV AT&T, um, where we monitor upwards of, of 450,000 devices across the continental US in one, uh, you know, obviously very large, but it, it speaks to the scalability of Mosaic as well, that we can grow from small systems up to uh, huge systems like that and still be able to provide our customers that that orchestration, the the single layer, single pane of glass um, type capabilities that they expect today of a modern monitoring system. Um, so obviously, I, I'd love to say a lot more about the company, but we're running out of time. So feel free to reach out to us either by email or by phone, and we can set up a demo. We can just chat about what we do, our, our philosophy, our ethos. Hopefully you've seen a bit of the passion that's going back and forth today with, uh, with Dave and myself and, and Bill. Um, so we are passionate about this as a subject, and we would love to talk to you about uh, your particular problems and how we can use Mosaic to solve your issues and make your lives better. Yeah, absolutely. In the in the chat, you'll see our email addresses. Please reach out to me. We're happy to to help and and talk you through what you're currently doing. Uh, Dave, thank you very much for for your time today. Uh, your passion for the system, we we absolutely love it. We love you. We love the things that you push us to do. It is just amazing. Uh, thank you, Bill. You're welcome, and, and I enjoy it very much. I just want to say to everybody out there, if you're passing through Nebraska and you're going down I-80 through Lincoln, Nebraska, stop. Give us a call. You're more than welcome to come over here. Hopefully, the doors will be open soon like that, but uh, you're welcome to come in. We'll show you around and show you what we're actually doing like that. So thank you, everybody. And like I said, if you have any questions, you can contact me as well. And I'll sign off with just a thank you to everybody who joined us today on the webinar. Hopefully you found it interesting and informative. And I want to final uh, say to today, thank you very much. You've been a, a wonderful uh, panelist today. And uh, we look forward to many good years working with you in the future. So thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks, folks. We'll sign up. Thank you for joining us today with this. And uh, have a great, great Thursday.